Welcome to SATV News, this is Shibala Alam with our headlines. Commodity prices shoot up once again. Fresh shock for limited income people, traders blame for high transport costs. Key workers go on indefinite strike across country, demanding increased daily wages to Taka 300 from Taka 120. Cybercrime 55.27% victims do not get desired outcome despite filling complaints. Almost all commodities that a family buys from the kitchen markets have once again witnessed a significant price hike. From rice, lentils, oil, sugar and flour to vegetable, eggs and chicken, no kitchen items refrained from following the suit of pursuit hike. It came as a fresh shock for the limited income people who were already struggling due to inflation. The increased price in the global market was blamed for the previous spell of price hike while the traders this time attributed the spiraling prices to high transport costs. The traders said that the unprecedented hike in fuel oil price had a bearing on the kitchen market. It may even impact the prices of industrial products in the days to come. According to the TCB price chart, all varieties of rice, lentils, flour, coarse flour, bottled soybean oil, sugar, garlic, local onion, dry chili, ginger, egg and broiler chicken registered a significant price hike since 5th August. Bangladesh Tea Workers Union has launched an indefinite strike from Saturday morning, demanding an increase in the daily wages to Taka 300 from the existing Taka 120 per day. Tea workers from 167 tea gardens of the country took part in the strike. Earlier on Friday, tea workers from various tea gardens in Malvi Badar abstained from work for two hours for the fourth consecutive day. They also carried out demonstrations and protest rallies to press home their demand. Bangladesh is producing record amount of tea every year through the toll of a tea worker. Although two agreements on increasing the wages have been implemented, the fate of more than 1.5 lakh tea workers of the country hasn't changed a bit. Vijay Hazra, organizing secretary of Bangladesh Tea Workers Union Central Committee, said that the rampant price hikes of daily essentials are making it impossible for the tea workers to run their families on a meager income of Taka 120 per day. He said that they had discussed the matter with the tea garden owners time and again but they're constantly breaking the agreements increasing the wages of the tea workers is a long-standing demand Nirpan Pal acting secretary of the union said that the tea workers will carry on the strike that the demand is met Around 55.27% of victims of cybercrime do not get the desired outcome after reporting to the law enforcement agencies in Bangladesh, according to a study published by the Cybercrime Awareness Foundation on Saturday. Monira Nazneem Jahan, a senior lecturer of a private university, presented the details of the study titled Cybercrime Trend in Bangladesh 2022 at a program at the Bangladesh's Crime Reporters Association Auditorium at Shegun Bagicha in Dhaka. Kazi Mustafis, president of Cybercrime Awareness Foundation, presided over the program. According to the report, only 7.4% of those who complained received a positive outcome in 2022. As per the 2021 report, 22.22% of the total number of victims received the expected outcome after reporting the law enforcement agencies, which is 15.18% higher than the 2022 figure. The survey showed that only 53 victims reported problems to law enforcement agencies this year, which is 26.6% of the total number of the victims. However, it is 5.17% higher than the previous year. The number of female complaints is comparatively lower than the male complaints. Among female victims, only 1106 approached the law enforcement agencies and 45.73% were reluctant to take legal actions. Bangladesh Jewelers Association, BAJUS, 
said that around Taka 70,000 crore is laundered from Bangladesh every year through gold smuggling. BAJUS leader said that this at a press conference held at the association's office in Boshundhara city complex in the capital on Saturday. They have sought the government's tough action and cooperation of intelligence agencies and law enforcers to stop gold smuggling through Bangladesh. A case has been filed against a local army league leader and his three sons on charges of assaulting three journalists in Pontogram area of Lal Monirhat. One of the victims, Anisur Rahman, Jomuna Television's Lal Monirhat correspondent, filed the case with Lal Monirhat Shodor Police Station today. The accused are Azizur Rahman Mondol, president of Pontogram Union Army League, and his three sons, Sultan Mondol, Shah Jahan Ali Mondol, and Shaheb Ali Mondol. The other injured journalists are Prothom Alo's correspondent, Abdul Rab Shujan, and Akhon Television's correspondent, Mahfuzul Islam Bakul. OC Eshadul Alam said Azizur Rahman and his sons went into hiding after the incident. Police are trying to arrest the accused. Michael is to make the first visit by a UN rights chief to Bangladesh this week, including to the sprawling refugee camps home to nearly a million Rohingyas. Bachelet's office announced that the trip from Sunday to Wednesday was at the Dhaka government's invitation. During her visit to the capital Dhaka, the UN rights chief is scheduled to meet with Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and other ministers. The High Commissioner will also travel to Cox's Bazaar to visit camps housing Rohingya refugees from Myanmar and meet with refugees, officials and non-governmental organizations. We are taking a short break. Please stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching SCTV News. Now news from abroad. Author Salman Rushdie was stabbed in the neck and abdomen at a literally event in New York, U.S. on Friday. The 75 years old author is on ventilator and could lose an eye. Police have identified his attacker. The author's agent said that the Salman Rushdie suffered severed nerves in an arm and damage to his liver and could lose an eye. The news is not good. Andrew Wiley is his agent, wrote in an email. New York State Police identified his attacker as Hadi Matar, 24, from New Jersey. Officials said that the motive behind the attack remained unclear. A preliminary review of Martyr's social media showed him to be a sympathetic to Shia extremism and the causes of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard. Mr. Rushdi was repeatedly stabbed by Hadi Matar, who rushed to the stage and attacked him. Henry Reese, the interviewer, who also suffered a head injury in the attack. The attack occurred at Rushdi was about to give a speech at the Chautauqua institutions near the New York City, which holds art programs. There are around 2,500 people in the audience who were evacuated later. Taliban fighters beat women protesters and fired into the air on Saturday as they violently dispersed a rare rally in the Afghan capital, days ahead of the first anniversary of the hardline Islamist return to power. Since seizing power on August 15 last year, the Taliban have rolled back the marginal gains made by women during the two decades of U.S. intervention in Afghanistan. About 40 women chanting bread, work and freedom marched in front of the Education Ministry building in Kabul before the fighters dispersed themselves by firing their guns into the air. Some women protesters who took refuge in nearby shops were chased and beaten by Taliban fighters with their rifle butts. The protesters carried a banner which read, August 15 is a black day, as they demanded rights to work at political participation. Some journalists covering the protest, the first women's rally in months, were also beaten by the Taliban fighters. 
Ukraine and Russia accused each other on Friday of risking catastrophe by shelling Europe's largest nuclear power plant occupied by Russian forces in a region expected to become one of the next big front lines of the war. Western countries have called for Moscow to withdraw its troop from the Zaporizhia plant, but there has been no sign so far of Russia agreeing to that. The plan was captured by Russian forces in an early March, but it is still run by Ukrainian technicians. The plan dominates the south bank of the vast reservoir of the Dnipro River that cuts across southern Ukraine. Ukrainian forces controlling the towns and cities on the opposite bank have come under intense bombardment from the Russian-held side. Now sports news. Seven-time Ballon d'Or winner Lionel Messi misses out as 15 Premier League players, including 12 from Liverpool and Manchester City, are nominated for this year's coveted football award. There are 30 players in total nominated for the men's prize, with half of the names on the list playing in the season's Premier League. The England-based players are Trent Alexander-Arnold, Joao Cancelo, Kevin De Bruyne, Luis Diaz, Fabin Ho, Phil Foden, Erling Haaland, Harry Kane, Riyad Mahrez, Darwin Mununas, Cristiano Ronaldo, Mohamed Salah, Bernardo Silva, Son Hang Ming, and Virgil van Dijk. Real Madrid's Karim Benzema, one of the strong favourites, is listed by Messi, does not make it after an underwhelming first season and Paris said Germain. Before ending, we go to the headlines again. Commodity prices shoot up once again. Fresh shock for limited income people. Traders blame for high transport costs. Tea workers go on indefinite strike across country, demanding increased daily wages to Taka 300 from Taka 120. Cybercrime 55.27% victims do not get desired outcome despite filing complaints. You're up to date so far here on SATV News and to know the latest news visit www.satv.tv. Stay with SATV.